Bam! Mr. Taru, in this video, we are going to learn how to recognize uh, a homogeneous differential equation, and then we're going to do three examples, giving us some practice and experience of how to help you do your homework uh, dealing with these kind of equations. In the description, you will find a link to my other video, Solving First Order Differential Equations and uh, Solving Separable Differential Equations. So now that we look at this third type, how are we going to recognize when we have a homogeneous differential equation and what do we do to solve them? Well, <clears throat> you can manipulate, if you can manipulate the differential equation to have a dy dx, so first order differential equation, on one side, and then the other side of the equation to be some kind of function in the form of f of y over x. So like we have here, we have our first example, dy over dx, is equal to x cubed plus y cubed, <coughs> excuse me, over x times y squared. And you won't maybe necessarily know this right off the bat. Um, there's lots of different types of differential equations and it can become quite complicated um, knowing how to attack them. So it takes some experience and, and uh, time with your homework and different types of these problems to get used to this. But if you, you can prove to yourself that it is a homogeneous first order differential equation if you can manipulate it into that form of y over x. So we see here that we have on the right hand side a term of x cubed. Well, that's certainly not in the form of some kind of y over x. So maybe I divide both the numerator and denominator by an x cubed so that this first term becomes a 1. Well, what else is going to happen? Well, our y cubed divided by x cubed is going to be, well, y cubed over x cubed. And then here we have x y squared divided by x cubed is going to yield y squared over x squared. Well, <coughs> this can be rewritten, excuse me, as dy over dx is equal to 1 plus y over x cubed over y over x squared. And so here we see that we have, you know, basically our, it's not a and, you know, one independent variable, but we have this form of f, the f of being 1 plus something cubed over something squared, and that um, expression being substituted into that function f is our y over x. So we have that y uh, or that f of y over x format. Now, <clears throat> as we do the examples, excuse me, the coughing, please, um, I'm going to write them as we get started, all three of these examples in this form before we start the process of solving these, these homogeneous differential equations. But you can recognize them by when uh, that differential equation is written in the form of f of x and y. So not y over x, but just within that function you have a combination of variables of x and y working together like we have here. All the terms on the right hand side, so you're still wanting to isolate that dy over dx notation, all those terms on the right hand side have the same degree. So we have x to the third, which has a degree of three. We have plus y cubed, which has a degree of three. And now in the denominator, we have x to the first times y squared. Well, this is one term. It's a product, of course, of some variable of x and y. And if you take those exponents of 1 and 2 and add them together, you get, again, a degree of 3. So one term, degree of 3, another term, a degree of 3. A third term in the denominator of this, well, actually one big, somewhat, somewhat complicated term, which also has a degree of 3. So that's your indication that, hey, I think I'm looking at a homogeneous differential equation. Let's try and manipulate it into that form of dy over dx is equal to some function f of y over x. Now, if you can do that, <coughs> we have the two steps, or actually a few steps, that we're going to take to solve these problems. We're going to substitute, or take out that y over x um, expression and substitute in a new variable of v. So we're going to just say let v equal y over x. Well, if we let v equal y over x, then we can say by multiplying both sides by v that y is equal to um, vx. Now, why do we do that? Well, to start solving this homogeneous differential equation, we're going to remove all references of y. So we want to take the y's out and replace them and just rewrite this entire differential equation to be in terms of v and x. So we need some kind of substitution for dy dx. Multiply both sides by x find dy over dx by using the product rule, the derivative of the first with respect to x, 
times the second factor, then plus the first factor, v, times the derivative of x with respect to x, which is just equal to 1. So we have dy over dx is equal to dv dx times x plus v. Your book might also show this as dy multiplied both sides by dx, and you might see that dy is equal to dv times x plus v times dx. Uh, just need to be consistent with whatever book you're using. And then we're going to do two substitutions. We're going to take our dy dx out and replace it with dv dx x plus v. And any place that we have a y over x expression, we're going to replace that with v. And that's going to transform this homogeneous differential equation, first order, into a separable uh, differential equation. And we're going to learn, or not learn, but practice uh, and reinforce those skills that we learned in just a couple of sections ago when we learned how to solve separable differential equations. So the first example coming up right now. So for our first example, let's just finish what we started. We have our differential equation. We have put it into the form of f of y over x. And now let's take that first step and let v equal y over x. Well, and that's going to give us uh, one substitution. But now we're going to solve that for y. Find that dy over dx. Just take the derivative of that product uh, with respect to x. And again, we have that dv over dx times x plus, so we took the derivative of the first factor and left the second alone. Now plus, we're going to take, leave the first factor alone and take the derivative of the second. So plus v. Now, <clears throat> you know you've done this, uh, or you're in the process of doing this correctly, if you can remove all the references of y from this homogeneous differential equation and have it all in terms of x and v. So our dy over dx comes out. And we have dv over dx times x plus v. And then we have equals 1 plus v cubed over v squared. And we're looking to now um, separate the variables and finish solving this. So let's go ahead and we have variables of v on both the left and the right hand side. So we're going to bring this over with subtraction. We have dv over dx, and my apologies for the air conditioner, but it's right outside the window, and it's Florida, and it's hot. So, anyway, yeah, we're going to subtract both sides by v. We're going to need to do a little bit of work, of course, to find a common denominator. Multiply the top and bottom by v squared, and we have dv over dx times x is equal to and of course, we're going to have a v cubed here. So we have a common denominator. So 1 plus v cubed minus v cubed is going to be equal to 1 over v squared. We're going to separate these variables now. We're going to both at the same time divide both sides by x and uh, multiply by dx. And then I'm going to multiply the v squared over to the left hand side. So we have v squared dv is equal to, again, dividing both sides by x and you know moving the dx with, over with what looks like multiplication. And we have 1 over x dx. And now we have all our variables of v on the left-hand side, all our variables of x on the right. Of course, we have a dv and a dx indicating a derivative of x and a derivative of v. We're going to now integrate both sides of this equation. And remember, you only have to put the plus c on one side. So we're going to have the integral of v squared with respect to v is going to be 1 third v cubed. is not plus, but equal to the integral of 1 over x dx is the natural log of the absolute value, don't forget that, of x. And then our constant on just one side. It's not necessary to put it on both because a constant and a constant, you bring it over with subtraction, you get another, you know, constant. Well. You know, that's practically done. Uh, again, we didn't start with the most complicated problem here, but this solution, this general solution with the plus C, 
has a V in it. Well, our original differential equation did not have any references to V. We just used that as a tool to work our way through this process and transform our homogeneous differential equation into what effectively was then a separable differential equation. So we're going to get rid of this V and we're going to plug in our y over x cubed is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x. See, we're going to multiply both sides by 3. So we have y over x. And let's go ahead and uh, raise that entire fraction to a power of 3. So we have y cubed over x cubed is equal to multiplying both sides by 3. We have 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x. And then, you know, it's plus, you know, really it's 3c, but a constant times 3 is just going to yield another constant. So you can just leave it as c. Uh, your teacher might be writing like a c sub 1, c sub 2, maybe. Um, you might have books uh, now called this a instead of c, which is just another unknown constant. I'm going to leave it as another plus c. Multiplying now both sides by um, x cubed, and we have y cubed is equal to x cubed times 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And that's really, you know, about as far as we can go. Uh, you might see this in slightly different form formats. Maybe the 3 is up here as a power. Again, maybe that c is written as a natural log of c, and you have that combined. But that is the end of this first example. That is our general solution to this homogeneous differential equation, first order. Uh, homogeneous differential equation, second example coming up right now. Na, 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 na. Example two. It's going to be a little more complicated than the first example. We have x squared times dy dx is equal to 2x squared plus y squared. Okay, well now we don't have the dy over dx isolated yet, so let's go ahead and do that so we can kind of match this problem up with the notes and the directions we were given. Uh, we're going to divide all three of these terms, of course, by x squared to isolate the dy dx. And we have that dy dx is equal to 2 plus y squared over x squared, which, of course, is really just y over x squared. So really, just trying to isolate the, the, the first order derivative, we've already fallen into that dy over dx is equal to f of y over x. So, so far, it's not looking like it's really that much more complicated than our first example. So let's go ahead and recognize that, yes, we do have a first order homogeneous differential equation and say, let v equal y over x. That would lead to y is equal to vx. And finding dy dx, so we have those two um, expressions for substitution, dy dx using the product rule, taking a derivative with respect to x. We have dv over dx times x plus v times 1. Derivative of the first factor here, and then derivative of the second factor for the second term, of course. We should know that. Now, dy dx is going to get replaced with, of course, our expression here. And y over x is going to come out and be replaced with v. And like the directions say, if you go through this process, you're going to transform your original differential equation now with just v's and x's into a separable differential equation. We get to pull those previously known tools out of the toolbox. We're going to subtract both sides by v and get dv over dx is equal to v squared minus v plus 2. And I forgot my factor of x. Separate those variables. We're going to divide both sides by x and multiply the dx over to the right-hand side and divide this entire expression of v squared minus v plus 2 over to the uh, left. And that's going to be 1 over v squared minus v plus 2. Thankfully, the air conditioner turned off for a little while. My apologies, it's right outside the window. Um, so now we have separated the variables. And now we know from our previous skills 
that with so, uh, separable differential equations, once you get those variables separated, you just integrate both sides. Well, here's where we step up a little bit in difficulty and maybe recall some skills that uh, you should have down pat. But if not, let's make sure you do know that. Know them. The right-hand side. Again, the integral of 1 over x dx is just the natural log of the absolute value of x. And we'll keep the constant of integration on the right-hand side. But our left-hand side, we have the skills to work with this, but with the denominator being v squared minus v plus 2, if you think of, oh, it's a fraction, maybe it's u prime over u, well, we would need a, what, a 2v minus 1 in the numerator, and we don't have a factor of v, um, or v to the first in the numerator, so it's not u prime over u. Um, this might be some kind of problem that involves um, an answer that involves an um, inverse trig function, and actually the question that this was inspired by was such that um, this constant here required you to take this denominator, work with the first two terms, and do a completing the square process to create a sum of squares in the denominator, and ultimately giving you an answer that involves some form of um, arc tangent. But when I made my own example, and I didn't realize it in the beginning, but I got to this step and realized, oh, well, I don't need to complete the square and make this a sum of squares in the denominator. It's actually a factorable trinomial. So we're going to do a little bit of scratch work and review um, a simple case of um, partial fractions. And I'll have links in the description as well besides my video dealing with um, exact or first order differential equation and separable differential equations. You'll find a link to all my lessons dealing with how to separate uh, fractions. So a little bit of scratch work. We have... <clears throat> that 1 over v squared minus v plus 2, since the denominator can be factored, actually I should just go ahead and do that, into v minus 2 times v plus 1, well then we can separate this into a couple of fractions that will be, you know, basically easy to integrate uh, by writing this as some constant over a denominator of v minus 2 plus another constant times p plus 1. So our denominator was a factorable trinomial and we don't have any situation here where the factors are repeating. That's another situation that again I'll have uh, reviewed in my lessons in the description, but our v minus 2 just shows up once, our v plus 1 shows up once. Uh, these are degrees of 1. I reduce that and to get to uh, basically a degree of 0 or constant in the numerator. And we should be able to find some constants of a and b that allow these two fractions to add up to our 1 over um, v minus 2 times v plus 1. What we're going to do first is multiply both sides of this equation to get rid of the fractions. So we're going to multiply by v minus 2 times v plus 1 to each of these three terms, yielding, of course, it's going to completely cancel here with our first fraction. So we have 1 is equal to, now for the second term or the first term on the right-hand side, the v minus 2s cancel out. We have a times v plus 1. For the second term on the right-hand side, the v plus 1 cancels out. And we have b is equal to v minus 2. Now, I didn't know this little shortcut. I, you, you probably do, but um, as I've had my years of teaching high school and stepping up into harder and harder question, uh, classes, excuse me, the pre-calc book uh, that I teach out of that I have all my lessons built off of for partial fractions does not deal with any kind of like shortcut process to um, uh, maybe sometimes, when possible, uh, quickly find those um, values or expressions in the numerator, and sometimes you do have to go through the whole process of systems of equations. But if you think of this rather simple setting as an identity that must always be true regardless of what v is equal to, because we want to find a value of a and b that make this equation true regardless of what b is, and this is going to be kind of funny because I'm going to use values that actually make these terms undefined, but looking at this line, if I say, well, hey, if this has to always be true, Let's let v equal negative 1. When we do that, we get 1 is equal to, that looks kind of funny there, 
Now, if we, if we plug in v equals negative 1 into this equation, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, the a cancels away, and there's the magic because we have some easy way of saying now b is equal to negative 1 minus 2, 1 is equal to negative 3b, so therefore b is equal to negative 1 third, and that's my constant that I'm going to have uh, basically on top of or in front of our 1 over uh, v plus 1. And then we're going to let v equal 2, and we have 1 is equal to 2 plus 1 is 3, so basically 3a, yielding that a has to be equal to 1 third. So now we know that if b is negative 1 third and a is positive 1 third, then those two fractions are going to add up and give us our 1 over um, v minus 2 times v plus 1. And now what's, what this is going to look like is that 1 over v minus 2 times v plus 1 is equal to 1 over 3 times 1 over v minus 2. Sometimes I get students that get a little bit lost in this because really like the numerator is that fraction of 1 third and you bring up the denominator by, multi you know, instead of saying dividing by a v minus 1, you multiply by the reciprocal or you multiply by 1 over v minus 2. It's actually kind of a little bit better to just say it's a times 1 over v minus 2 because that v minus 2 is in the denominator. And then minus 1 third for b, and it's a plus, but b is negative 1 third, and then times 1 over v plus 1. So I'm going to clean this all up, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this line right here, but this expression is going to come out and be replaced with this expression. Now, of course, you know that we're going to integrate each of these separately, but just to be thorough with the notes. And if our numerator is v minus 2 and you take a derivative of, be careful with your notation, the derivative of v minus 2 is equal to 1, the derivative of v plus 1 is equal to 1, so we have uh, 1 third times the natural log of the absolute value of v minus 2 minus 1 third times the natural log of v plus 1 is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Okay, we're just going to multiply both sides by 3. And <clears throat> we're going to go ahead here and we're going to recognize that we have a subtraction of two natural logs. Well, again, don't forget, of course, logarithms give you exponents. When you subtract exponents, you subtract exponents when you're dividing uh, like bases. And that like base is sort of like the natural log of e. The e that is the base of both these logarithms is that like base. So remember in your, your properties of logarithms, the natural log of a minus the natural log of b is the natural log of a divided by b. So we have the natural log of the absolute value of v minus 2 over v plus 1 is equal to um, 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. But I want to get rid of um, the natural log on both sides of this equation. So I'm also going to just say, let's bring this coefficient of 3 up and let it act as an exponent. And then I can make both sides of this equation an exponent of e, which is going to allow the natural logs to cancel out and simplify um, our answer before ultimately getting rid of our references of v. So e natural log or log base e, exponential functions, logarithms are inverse math operations, they're going to cancel out. So we have v minus 2 over v plus 1, and then over here we have, again, we have, the, uh, we have base e with the sum of two exponents. Well, when do you add exponents? When you multiply like bases. So this is going to give us equals e to the c times e to the natural log of the absolute value of x cubed. And really you should have like a, you can think of like having an absolute value um, over here um, as well. And it's this kind of bothers me actually a lot of times. Um, my textbook usually when they have this natural log of the absolute value here, 
uh, you can't natural log a negative number. And when they have this base C and the natural log canceling out, they often just let the absolute values um, cancel away. Truly, you should have some kind of um, justification as to what allows those absolute values to cancel out, and that kind of just bothers me. Um, but we have E, which is two, approximately 2.718 raised to a constant, which is going to yield just another constant. So we can say that there's another C here. Uh, your textbook may be now uh, identifying this as maybe like a variable A or something like that. Um, so though it bothers me how there's basically no justification uh, to explain away these absolute value symbols, I am going to just let them fall away uh, like my textbook um, does. Uh, but you know these expressions are inside those natural logs and such that um, they do need, you know, do, does need to yield um, positive values. But uh, yeah, that, that truly bothers me a little bit. Uh, we're going to let the Vs uh, come out now and replace it with y over x. We're going to go ahead and multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x to kind of simplify those out. And we have y minus 2x over y plus x is equal to c times x cubed. And just making sure that um, I'm good here. Yeah. And so that is the answer to our second example. Now, it will probably make my YouTube video a little bit long and hopefully not turn off too many uh, people looking for help, but we're going to do this two different ways. I'm including this example. It's not really terribly unique and actually fairly similar to our last example, but this particular problem, if you look at it long enough, you may recognize, hey, wait a minute, why are you doing it this way? I could have done it, you know, basically another way. This can be uh, worked with in terms of recognizing that it's a uh, homogeneous differential equation, but you might also recognize that somewhere in there is a uh, first order, uh, an, the, the first order linear differential equation that you can you know, transform into exact form, uh, which I'll review with you uh, in the close of this video. So, but you're in the section of homogeneous differential equations, there where you probably just got that, that fresh new tool in your head and that's what you're just focusing on. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get this solved for dy dx by dividing both sides by 2x. Here are the, uh, for the first term, the x is going to cancel out, given it's just a 1 half. And then minus 1 half with a negative uh, 1 over 2 times y over x. Voila! We have a first order derivative and in the form of f of 1 half minus 1 half of something, and that something is our uh, y over x. So again, let v be y over x, y is v x, and therefore dy over dx is dv dx times x plus v. Do our substitution, and we have dv over dx times x plus v is equal to 1 half minus 1 half of v. Separating the variables, we're going to um, go ahead and uh, bring this v over with subtraction and have dv dx times x is equal to 1 half and then minus one half v minus v. Of course, this needs to have a common denominator, so we have two over two v, and we're looking at dv dx times x is equal to one half minus three halves um, v. Not x, but v. Let's try that again. Okay, well, that's fine, but it's going to be a little bit cleaner to write this as 1 minus 3v over 2. That common denominator. And now we can see that we can um, bring this x over with division. The dx, bring it over with what basically looks like multiplication, and divide both sides by our, our 1 minus 3v 
giving us 1 over 1 minus 3v dv is equal to, remember we have a division of 2 here, and we're going to divide both sides by x, so we have a 1 over 2x uh, dx. And we've got the variable separated. We're going to solve by integrating both sides of this equation and recognizing that this is sort of like thinking about or integration rules. Uh, a lot of times with fractions, we can make a u prime over u pattern. And if our u is negative 1, 3, v, then u prime is going to be just negative 3. So we need our numerator to be negative 3. I'm going to introduce a multiplication of negative 3 in the numerator. So we have that u prime over u pattern. And of course, balance that with a division of negative 3. So we have negative 1 third times the indefinite integral of negative 3 over 1 minus 3v dv. And here we're just going to move the 1 half out front. 1 half times the indefinite integral, and this 1 over x dx keeps showing up in my examples. Hopefully it's not becoming too repetitive. And we have negative 1 third. This is u prime over u, so we have negative 1 third natural log of the absolute value of 1 minus 3v, and that is equal to 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Uh, now, <clears throat> I have a coefficient. We're going to use that same, create, uh, get rid of the natural logs by making both sides of this uh, uh, equation an exponent of base e, but I don't really want to work with a square root and a um, third root at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides of this equation by 2. So we have negative 2 thirds times the natural log of the absolute value of 1 minus 3v is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. We're going to bring this uh, negative 2 thirds up as a power. Natural log of the absolute value of 1 minus 3v raised to the negative 2 thirds power. Actually, we can bring that on the inside too. Let's go ahead and do that. And now we're going to go ahead and make both sides of this an uh, exponent of e to cancel out those natural logs. And here, it's a little bit easier to say, well, when the space c and the natural log cancel out, do we still need those absolute values? Can we justify that it's going to go away? Well, with this negative 2 thirds coming up as a power, Taking the third root of something can yield a uh, negative number, but then raising it to an even power then is going to guarantee that it's positive. So now here it's kind of like a little bit better to easily justify why you're just letting the absolute values drop away, even though they kind of seem to arbitrarily just drop away in my, say, AP Calc classes I teach and where you don't have to justify it. It, it does bother me, and maybe if you've got some insight uh, with a little bit more um, understanding of these problems and just deeper understanding mathematically or you've had your teacher or textbook explain um, explain this I would appreciate a little bit of help in the, in the uh, comments below but at any rate we're gonna have this space C and the natural log cancel out giving us with uh, 1 minus 3v I've often said that teaching on YouTube and not just my classroom has made me a better teacher because sometimes um, you know I get help from from you all that is um, more insightful than what I get in my textbooks or what I remember from my college years, you know, 25 years ago, or even from my students in class, because just, you know, huge array of intelligent people watching my videos. Uh, thank you very much. So this is going to be e uh, squared, or e, is e, excuse me, raised to the c, pa uh, c power, because of course, again, we have those sum of exponents with our base of e. And then, so we have e to the c raised to, or times, excuse me, not raised, but times e to the natural log of the absolute value of x. So the e to the c is going to give us just another constant, which you might call now a, or another c. And here the base c and natural log cancel out. So we have c times the absolute value of x. And we have our 1 minus 3v to the negative 2 thirds power. Okay, so we need to get this in reference to um, v's and x's. So we have our 1 minus 3 times y over x. And I'm starting to run out of space, and I'm pausing because I want to get this one set equal to uh, y. 
So that means that we're going to want to uh, get rid of this power of negative two thirds and I'm running out of space. What I want to do here is I want to, with the goal of getting this y equals, which we often like to do when solving differential equations, but sometimes we'll get away with not doing that. We're going to get rid of this power of negative two thirds by raising both sides of this equation by a power of negative three halves. And so again here, uh, if we're going to take the root of some number, it's going to have to be positive. So I'm going to let that x drop away for the absolute value because it's, again, just sort of like you can't take an even root unless this is a positive value anyway. Uh, the constant raised to another power is just another constant. So we have c times x to the negative 3 halves power. Now we can subtract both sides by 1 divide both sides by negative 3. C divided by negative 3 is another constant. Negative 1 divided by negative 3 is positive 1 third. And now multiply both sides by x. And we have y is equal to, now if we multiply both sides by x to get rid of this division of x, um, of course here the y over x times x is going to cancel and x to the negative 3 halves times x to the positive 1, or 2 over 2 is going to be x to the negative, so c times x to the negative 1 half power plus 1 third x. And yeah, so I can write this as, oops, did I miss a negative somewhere? Well, Yes or no, I'm going to point this out when we take a look at the um, second way of looking at this problem. That's also another reason why I'm doing this both ways. You may, the c divided by negative 3, mark that as a negative constant um, because you've taken a constant and divided by a negative number. We're going to show with the finding this answer another way that plus or minus, having a plus or minus in front of an unknown constant is not really important because you don't know what the constant is. And so is that you know, positive or negative and how does that affect the negative that's there? So we have y is equal to basically like a negative c over the square root of x or negative c times x to the negative one half power um, plus one third, x, uh, one third x and that does match my notes. Okay, now what if we were to see this problem another way. So we had that original problem. We worked it into dy dx, see that uh, y over x pattern, recognize that it's a homogeneous, uh, first order homogeneous differential equation, use the substitution to get rid of dy dx and to get y over x in terms of v. Should maybe have those little substitution formulas left up there at the top. But now when you look at it in this form, you might see this in a different uh, light on, you know, how to solve it. The direction said that after these uh, two substitutions that you would create a separable differential equation. But if, uh, which is not untrue, we just worked it that way. Where did I put my chalk? But if I add a one-half v to the other side, both to the right and left-hand side, well then one plus one-half is going to yield dv over dx times x plus 3 over 2v is equal to 1 half. Okay, so now we're going to isolate uh, this dv over dx by dividing each of these um, terms by x or multiplying through the entire equation 1 over x And that's going to give us, x divided by x of course is 1, so we have dv over dx plus 3 over 2x times v is equal to 1 over 2x. This is in the form of a first order, first order linear, this is a v to the um, first power, uh, a first order linear differential equation. 
where this is our p of x function and this is our q of x function. So if you're just looking at this uh, type of problem, maybe later on after studying multiple forms of differential equations, so you're not looking at just like this one most recent tool, uh, you can manipulate this not into a separable differential equation, but recognize that it is also can be written as a first order linear differential equation. And if you do that, then of course, hopefully we remember how to find that integrating factor. Like basically, how do you come up with a factor so that you can multiply it to both sides of this uh, linear differential equation to get it into exact form, where the left-hand side is the result of the um, derivative of a product. What well, can you multiply to both sides of this equation? So the left-hand side result is, is basically the result of a derivative uh, from working through the product rule. Well, our integrating factor is equal to e raised to the indefinite integral of our uh, p of x function. So our integrating factor is going to be e raised to the indefinite integral of uh, what? 3 over 2x dx, which means that we're looking at uh, our integrating factor is e raised to the 3 halves times the natural log of the absolute value of x. And with uh, coming up with the integrating factor, we always assume that c is equal to 0. So if we bring this 3 halves up as a power and let the base e and natural log cancel out, we have that our integrating factor is just x to the 3 halves power. And we don't need, again, the absolute value because if you're going to indicate that you're taking a root, that implies that your base has to be positive anyway, so the absolute values are a bit uh, redundant. So now we're going to take x to the 3 halves power and multiply that through each of these three terms of our differential equation. And we have x to the 3 halves power times dv dx plus, now plus what? We have 3 halves, 3 over 2, and this is x to the negative 1 times x to the, what, 3 halves. And negative 1 plus 3 halves is going to be x to the 1 half, right? x to the 3 over 2, I should probably just be writing this instead of talking through it, but I'm going to run out of space. So when you take this x to the 3 halves power and multiply it to the second term, you're going to have x to the 3 halves power over x to the first. Of course, we can subtract those exponents. And v, right, don't forget the v there, is equal to, again, here we have 1 half, or 1 over 2 times x to the first. Well, now you're going to multiply that by, well, I can write it here. You're going to divide like bases, you subtract those exponents. So once again, 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half. Okay, so do you see what we have here? If you just recently did this section in your textbook, we have x to the 3 halves, and the derivative of x to the 3 halves is 3 halves x, and you reduce that power by 1, x to the 1 half. And here we have a factor of v, and in the first term we have a factor of dv. So this is like, what, p times, what, q prime plus p prime times q. The left-hand side is the result of taking a derivative of the product of two factors. So the left-hand side can be written as, and this is a derivative with respect to x, the derivative with respect to x of x to the 3 halves power times v. And the right-hand side is just 1 half x to the 1 half. And someone's coming home. Okay, we're almost done. If you've made it all this far, thank you so very much for watching all the way through this video. I hope it has helped. I'm going to go ahead and just for notation's sake, it just I think it's cleaner. We're going to move that dx over to the other side, and we are almost done. Now, we got a derivative of the left-hand side. We have, a, of course, terms of x and uh, v. We actually, you know, 
we're going to take the integral and just let that cancel out. We're going to integrate both sides of both sides of this equation. And that integral and derivative process, of course, just cancel out. Our left-hand side is just going to be x to the 3 halves times v, which we knew already. We set that up, making the left-hand side the result of the product rule, derivative resulting or using the product rule. The right-hand side, we're going to raise that power by 1 and then divide. 1 half plus 1 is what, 3 halves. Mult uh, divide by that or multiply by the reciprocal. And we have 1 half times 2 over 3. And don't forget that constant of integration. Uh, the division of 2 and multiplication of 2 cancel out. And we're going to go ahead and take that v out and replace it with y over x, right? We don't want our final answer to be in terms of v when it wasn't part of the original problem. So we have x to the 3 halves power times y over x is equal to 1 third x to the 3 halves power plus c. x to the 3 halves, again divided by x to the first, is going to be x to the 1 half power times y is equal to 1 third x to the 3 halves plus c. And now dividing, oh, chalk down! And now dividing everything by the square root of x, or having that x to the negative 1 half power like we had in the other version of our answer, we have y is equal to 1 third x plus <clears throat> c divided by the square root of x. Now, what do we have in our other answer? We had y was equal to a 1 third x, and it was minus c over the square root of x. But again, plus or minus an unknown constant, we don't really know the sign of that unknown constant. So the plus or minus here isn't really important. So here we have a problem that once we recognize that it was a homogeneous, first order homogeneous differential equation, we could go through that uh, separation of variable process, but actually this one is a little bit shorter if you know you could have seen that developing uh, first order uh, linear differential equation. But either way, we got the same answer, and I hope you made it to the end. I hope this all helps. I miss it true. Bam! Go to your homework. Yep. Fell right into that dy dx is equal to f of y over x. And let's see what my little doggy is barking about. This is our excellent watchdog, Dory, uh, and uh, hopefully with a little bit of distraction, she'll stop distracting us. Okay.